should be an investigation as to who was pulling the shots and what was but going on. But there's also YouTube footage. A lot of police. Yeah. No, we have that. A lot of police did not like what was going on. There's no question about that. But, I mean, you're saying that the people who yeah. were burning cars and I'll were point, not part I'll of your point group. To, yeah, and I'll point to that because uh, if you look on YouTube, there is so many footage, so many uh, video clips that point to the black bloc operating as underco undercover cops. Like, uh, there was, uh, in Queens Park, we had a whole group of people dressed up as black bloc guys uh, that broke away from the main group and started to run for the police lines, and the police lines opened up, and they were able to run across. <laughs> option that was taken they need to explain why they need to explain who made that decision and if the Canadian public don't want to see that on their soil they have to put measures into place that that'll never be repeated again Now, this fact was brought up in this Canadian Civil Liberties report, apparently, that there ha there's questions about police plants being, uh, you know, provocateurs or plants or, you know, just undercovers. undercovers being placed in to these marches. Now, this was brought up at this Law Union of Ontario event that we played the clip for earlier. We played the first question, basically, of the Q&A. So maybe I'll skip ahead to the last. This was the final question, and this was an important one because it's the question about this police provocateur issue. He br the questioner brings up the 2007 uh, in Montebello, the SPP protest, where there was found there was three uh, Surete de Quebec officers that were posing as, you know, black-clad anarchists that were found to be, you know, they were actually police officers, and this was an actual, you know, operation from the highest, you know, ranks of the, you know, police. Uh, was this going on in Toronto? I'm not sure. Check this out. boots and everything went into the crowd and were trying to like throwing rocks and trying to like almost create a pretext for the police to come in and sort of beat up everybody. And there were similar allegations made up with the police at the G20 where there were people wearing police boots that went into the crowd, were causing trouble, looking like to give the police as an excuse to go and attack the crowd and then these same people ended up going and disappearing behind police lines. Now, I think this is like a, a tactic used in authoritarian and dictatorial societies, and I think it should be condemned in the strongest possible way. In fact, it should be also criticized. In fact, these people should be disciplined, if not put in jail, because it's a very, very serious transaction on the part of the police to try to go and disrupt crowds. And this has happened time and time again. Now, I'm not 100% clear, but I believe that there were numerous reports that were credible that documented that this, in fact, took place. And I'd like to hear the, uh, all four members of the panel about the use of this sort of tactic and what can be done to prevent it and to protect uh, people from such abuses. Well, if it, did, if it did indeed happen, obviously it shouldn't, and it's a very serious issue. Uh, I don't oversee police in Ontario, so I will defer to uh, my co-panelists. <laughs> what a segue. <laughs> um, Look, I'm not about to comment on that, primarily because it's a matter that's coming under uh, uh, one of the uh, terms of reference uh, in regards to uh, uh, my systemic review. Because uh, it, my, my systemic review deals with stop and searches, uh, arrests, use of force, and what the gentleman has described uh, seems to cover the gamut of that. And so I'll, I prefer not to comment at this time so that I'm not perceived as being making a pre-decision in regards to the outcome of uh, my review. 
it, that issue just did not arise in the six uh, SIU investigations, so I'm, I'm not in a position to comment, sir. I'm in a position to comment. <laughs> One of the wonderful things about being in private practice, <laughs> nobody pulls the strings but you. <laughs> Obviously, the, the gentleman is correct to me, and I don't think that police need to engage in those kind of tactics in order to do their job effectively. I think it's just a shortcut, and it's uh, unnecessary, and it's unacceptable in a democracy. And as I said, I think there's a culture of complacency out there that the general public seems to think that the G20 excesses were, were necessary for the safety of the, of the public and the people who were the victims deserve what they got. There seems to be, I think that that's why nobody's really doing anything about it. We're, so, we're, we're hoping that people are going to start doing stuff about this because we've been talking about these issues. People are seeing, you know, protests internationally. And we're really wondering, you know, this is a, it's a question of tactics, I guess, in, in this case. Um, Derek, wh what did you think about those responses here? This was a major question. This is basically the major question, too, posed in the, the movie Toronto G20 Exposed. Um, what did you think about, you know, the, these officials responding? And here, let me just say who these officials were again. We had, you heard Andre Moran, the Ombudsman of Ontario, Jerry McNeely, Director of the Office of Independent Police Review, Ian Scott, Director of the SIU, and Roger Rowe of uh, Roger Rowe Law. Um, Derek, wh what did you think about how, you know, how the panelists responded to that at that event last week? Yeah, I think it's an issue that needs to be investigated because these are unanswered questions. What if the police were involved, either um, they were following the protest and dressed in black attire, which we do have video footage of police from G20 dressed in black clothing, <laughs> and they were protected behind police lines. So that is something that needs to be investigated. And if these are tactics that were used, such as in Montebello, which the CBC did a piece on that, and they admitted to it. Protesters at this week's summit in Montebello are accusing police of trying to incite violence. Video on YouTube shows union officials confronting three men they say were police officers dressed up as demonstrators. One of the men is holding a rock. Now, Steve Fisher reports the union is demanding to know if the Prime Minister's office was involved in trying to discredit the demonstrators. That undercover officers infiltrated protests at Montebello this week. Police are facing new accusations. They have overstepped the thin blue line. Here's Peter Harris. When the Montebello protest turned ugly earlier this week, a clash between the police and protesters was expected. But what wasn't expected was this. Three Quebec police officers caught on YouTube wearing masks, carrying rocks, and posing as protesters. Denying it all at first, the Surité de Québec now admit that the masked men are their own. It was stunning video posted on the internet for all to see, and it came with a charge that police masqueraded as protesters at this week's Montebello summit to incite violence. Tonight, an equally stunning admission from Quebec's provincial police. Susan Bonner reports. Busted. Three Quebec provincial police officers, identities masked, one carrying a huge rock, hey, put the rock down. nabbed for infiltrating a peaceful protest at Montebello. The tip-off came from a union leader who noticed riot police standing by despite the obvious weapon. He accused the men of being undercover cops trying to provoke a riot and end the protest. The men were removed but never charged. After two days of questions, the Sûreté de Québec issued a news release late today confirming, yes, the men are police officers, but denying they were agents provocateurs, claiming they were sent in to identify and stop trouble. They say the police refused to throw stones, committed no crime, and were there to maintain order and security. There's a serious issue about pol proper police conduct here. Criminal lawyer Lawrence Greenspawn has defended protesters for decades. He says it's time for politicians to act. I think the people that represent us in the legislature should be looking at some form of legislation that says, wait a second, this is not a, a proper use of police resources and we should be setting guidelines. <laughs> 
activists have argued for years that police try to thwart their legal right to protest by trying to incite aggression so they can move in and take protesters away. They say they do it even when demonstrators gather in a designated area, as these mostly unionists were in Montebello. And they say politicians tacitly endorse it. This is the face of it, where people can't even ask a question without trying, without having to face these kinds of goons. The Supreme Court has ruled protesters have the right to be seen and heard. Tonight, both the Quebec and federal governments are facing calls to do more to police the police. Susan Bonner, CBC News, Ottawa. Controversy continues to brew from that prank phone call that was released yesterday between Governor Walker and a man posing as a top campaign contributor. Newsweek's Mark Lovacott continues our team coverage now with more on why Madison's police chief says he wants some answers. I'm good. And yourself? It's a prank phone call that is not sitting well with many of the folks who continue to protest around the state capitol. It's also not sitting well with Madison's police chief. I, I really do believe he needs the opportunity to be able to further explain, further clarify something that uh, I, I can't believe that, that he intended. Chief Noble Ray is speaking out about one particular statement Governor Walker made on that prank call to a man he thought was billionaire David Koch. It's about the protests happening outside his office and the thought about inserting troublemakers into the crowd. Here's the excerpt. What we were thinking about the crowds was, uh, was planting some troublemakers. You know, the... Well, the only problem with the because we thought about that it was a public safety uh, at risk. It was a based upon what was saying. It was suggesting to uh, cause disorderly behavior that could have led to unrest. Governor Walker has said he stands behind the conversation he had, even though it was a prank. That said, Chief Ray says he needs an explanation as to why the governor would even consider causing trouble in what has otherwise been a peaceful protest. Good afternoon and welcome to the program. A senior Met Police commander has been summoned to reappear before a committee of MPs to explain why he gave them false information about the G20 protests. Commander Bob Broadhurst denied plainclothes officers were among the crowd, saying it would have been too dangerous. Here's our home affairs correspondent, Guy Smith. We had no plainclothes officers deployed within the crowd. There were no plainclothes officers deployed at all. Wrong. That information to a powerful parliamentary committee in May 2009 was inaccurate and misleading. The Met Police has now admitted covert officers were indeed used during the G20 protests. So why would Commander Bob Broadhurst, Britain's most senior public order officer, categorically deny this? There was much media debate at the time about undercover officers actively stirring up violence, in short, agents provocateurs. During the same hearing, this was the Met Commissioner Sir Paul Stevenson's response. The idea that we will put agent provocateurs in the crowd is wholly antithetic to everything I've known about policing for the best part of 34 years. Uh, can I ask uh, uh, Commander Broadhurst? If I can just come in there, Chair. Um, I was obviously the Gold Commander. Commander Broadhurst then gave this reply. It would have been dangerous for them to put plain close officers in a crowd like that. The only officers we deploy for intelligence purposes at public order are Ford intelligence team officers who are wearing full police uniforms with a yellow jacket with blue shoulders. Next Tuesday, the commander will have to explain himself to MPs. I hope that uh, the Home Affairs Select Committee will get to the bottom of this and will get some clarity. And if there's an issue about the, uh, the, the, the gold commander not being informed about how officers are deployed and what their role is, that that will be addressed. It comes as no great revelation. Undercover officers would be in the crowd spotting troublemakers. What is a surprise is why misinformation was given to MPs. Did Commander Broadhurst deliberately mislead? Or did he just not know where his officers were? Either way, it doesn't look good for the man who will be heading up the operational planning for next year's London Olympics. Guy Smith, BBC London News.